My dream is for the Sheffield BRC to be internationally excellent at protecting precious cells within the nervous system and therefore delaying, slowing down, improving the lives of uh, patients facing these progressive neurological conditions. The multidisciplinary teams that we have within Citroen help us bring a pipeline of potential therapies and measures to address troublesome symptoms through for the benefit of patients. The reason I do what I do is to have a benefit for, for people with neurodegenerative diseases. Um, that's why I get up in the morning and come to work and so that's my ultimate aim. And having the Sheffield BRC here and being part of that really means that that pipeline is speeded up. And I can see that what happens in the lab at the bench can really have an effect and a benefit for the patients. We have patients as part of our executive group within the uh, BRC. Uh, and as we're prioritising what the BRC is going to support, patients have as big a voice as anybody else on the executive to decide well this is something exciting, this is important and we should prioritise this to translate this into benefits for patients. We're already doing early clinical trials and that's exactly uh, what we've been wanting to do for a very long time because we have this wonderful facility at Citron where we can do drug screens uh, in an academic setting and we'll have the wonderful clinical research facility, the CIF. But what we really missed was something which would link the two things and that's the BRC. In here we've got um, skin cells from patients with Parkinson's, actually ones that were um, biopsied here in um, Professor Bandman's clinic. And so what we can do is set them up and, and grow them in plates like this. Um, we're doing a drug repurposing screen uh, and so these are drugs which are currently used for other diseases uh, and then we're screened to see whether they can be useful in Parkinson's. Um, so we've got one uh, really good candidate that's come out and so that's UDCA and what we found was that it really boosts the energy status of the cells from patients with Parkinson's. And drug repurposing is really a fantastically powerful approach to allow the academic community to undertake more drug trials. Why is that? Because it's much cheaper and it's much quicker to assess novel compounds for their effect in illnesses such as Parkinson's disease. So the thing that really enabled the screen to happen uh, is having a drug screening facility in Citron. So we have several high content imaging machines and other pieces of equipment that normally are found mainly in industrial, pharmaceutical industrial labs and there's very few academic labs that have them uh, in the UK which means that we can find the biology, undertake the screen uh, and then move it beyond that uh, back to the patients. It's really nice to see you again, how are you doing? And this really is the first time ever worldwide that a drug which was identified in a drug screen carried out in patient tissue will now be taken into real patients. Morning, Laura. So a biomarker is something that we measure um, in human beings. Uh, and it may be a biochemical footprint of the disease that we might measure in blood or cerebrospinal fluid, or it may be an imaging marker that we can measure using the sophisticated imaging techniques that we have for looking at the nervous system now. But perhaps most importantly for patients, uh, if we get a good biomarker, they can tell us whether the experimental medicine treatments that we're trying are doing some good. Patients having a senile mutation. Do you want to look okay. at the cells? Yeah, yeah, yeah. NRF2 is a little messenger molecule in all the cells of our body, and when those cells are under stress, NRF2 goes into the genetic material within the nucleus of the cell and upregulates 
a whole lot of protective genes. And we discovered a few years ago that that important protective system is dysregulated. It's not operating properly in motor neuron disease. So we've been looking for drugs that activate that protective response. The NRF2 project is a beautiful example of the collaborative spirit within the Sheffield BRC, a multidisciplinary team of scientists with different skills and clinicians with different skills, um, all focused on the end point that we're trying to achieve, which is slowing down disease progression in MND. And that NRF2 pathway might well be important in other neurodegenerative conditions as well as MND. So I was diagnosed in uh, January 2011 with multiple sclerosis. It's quite scary to be diagnosed with something, a condition that's um, likely to deteriorate. It just throws your plans for the future in, in a little bit of turmoil. What interested me about having the HSCT treatment was if the MS is as a result of environmental factors and bacteria and viruses that you've picked up along the way which has influenced your immune system by actually um, rebooting your immune system back to a time before the MS potentially you've got that uh, chance of, of stopping the disease completely. So we're not now talking about um, just reducing relapses, we're actually talking about prolonged uh, remission. Some of my symptoms have disappeared and uh, I've not had a relapse now for two years. So that allows me to carry out my work duties without having to worry about what kind of day it's going to be. It just gives you freedom and optimism, I think, for the future. I wanted to get more involved in helping others really. So I was approached by the Biomedical Research Centre about uh, whether I would be interested in uh, being a, um, a patient public representative to be able to, to look at other trials that are accessible for people with other neurological conditions, but also to be able to help uh, develop and design some of these trials uh, from the patient public perspective. It's exciting to be here today. I would say it's five years of work which have led to this point from the initial ideas that came from, from patients um, about not having uh, you know, a, a sort of neck support that was fit for purpose that they wanted to use. So patients driving the research and then feeding into the concept development, true partnership we had with patients. Can I open it? Of course you can. It's like Christmas morning. <laughs> Oh, that's really neat. So, so obviously what and then the sort of development and the evaluation which has gone on since then. And here we are, and I've held in my hand today for the first time uh, the final product uh, that's going to be available on the NHS to patients tomorrow. It's really great. Taylor made approached us because they'd, they'd heard about the collar and were, were interested in it. It feels just right that it's been designed here in Sheffield and we're working with a commercial partner uh, in the area as well. What they've brought uh, to the product is, I think has taken it to uh, the next level. They're so enthusiastic about um, developing this uh, and bringing it to patients both in the NHS and internationally and they've brought several design innovations uh, which are real improvements. Neoprene outer with the nice soft neoprene finish on it yeah, but lined with Outlast which is the thermal regulating material that uh, NASA originally designed. What the BRC does it, it, it joins up uh, the discovery science and helps channel the, the outputs from that, the new exciting compounds, the new technologies, you know, such, such as head up into patient populations to allow us to test it in patient populations. And then as, we, as we're seeing with the head up project, it, it then allows us to begin to make commercial partnerships uh, to you know, make sure that we realise the full potential of what we've developed earlier in the pathway. The Sheffield BRC 
um, is really exciting going forward because in one year we've already made a lot of progress but actually also we've recruited some really really talented young scientists both clinical scientists and basic scientists to train in the translational neuroscience pipeline uh, and that's really exciting going forward um, over the next four years. And now we have the infrastructure, we have the people, we have the facilities, we have the brains to take the drugs we found at Citron into early clinical trials, into academically led clinical trials. If you see patients suffering from the disorders that we work on, and if you can see the glimmer of hope in their eyes when they feel that people are taking an interest in them and trying to do something about the disease that they're suffering from, I, th I think as a doctor there is a real beauty in that.